Hello there, everybody. Yes, I know. It's Saturday. What are we doing with our lives? My name is Adam Cleary, and this is Andy Murray. And you join us on this auspicious day of professional wrestling as there are counting one, two, three huge shows coming up today. And we're going to be trying to do various things with them as the evening gets on. But before all that, we have a lot of wrestling news to get through, don't we? It's going to be fun. Can't it's wait. It's going to be loads to and loads of fun. Late in the morning. Yeah, hey. but before all that happens, we have loads and loads of news, as I say, and includes AEW appointments backstage. An awesome appointment, if I do say so myself. Mm, very nice. Also, an update on why I sound like a goddamn croaky little frog <laughs> boy today. But more importantly, an update on chair shots unprotected in AEW. I hope you're sitting down for Vince. For Vince? For this? Vince has been doing a Vince. We've got comments from Triple H, finally, on Enzo and Cass. And the AEW announced team looks to be locked in for good because this is the news. That will one, does it? That'll do That'll nicely, do, I yes. Think, but... First of all, though. First of all, we are going to start talking a little bit about All Out, of course, because it happens in like seven hours or whatever at the time of recording. Know, Very exciting. Is. Super, can't wait. Big <laughs> casino battle royale in the buy-in, isn't there? Winner of that gets a title shot. Women's championship. They're going to face the winner of Hikaru Shida versus Riho on the main card. Can't wait to see what happens, but we have a potentially huge spoiler for this one. Now, obviously, if you want to avoid spoilers, you might want to like mute for a minute. We'll do some mad arm stuff when it's good we'll to come We'll wave back you on. back in, yes. We absolutely will. So, yeah, like mute, mute it now because I'm about to tell you exclusive news. AEW, Impact Wrestling, in talks all day, according to Justin Barrasso of Sports Illustrated, to try and get... Tenil Dashwood to appear in this match. Whoa! Um, obviously, she just recently signed with Impact, mm. debuted on yesterday's TV show from Mexico City, confronted Taya Valkyrie, the Knockouts champion, but now in a, in a pretty interesting move, given that Impact previously blocked, blocked Brian Cage from appearing in the same match at Double or Nothing. They're trying to get Tenille in. The former Emma could be in the Casino Battle Royale. Well, that's interesting because we, when we were accruing the rumours together for last minute rumours, we sort of ruled this one out because, as you say, they blocked Brian Cage. But we did sort of discuss it and we said, well, they're going to want people to re-sign with Impact <coughs> in the coming years. And if they're ruling people out from working for AEW, when there's no reason for them to do that in terms yeah. of scheduling, that's going to put a lot of people off. So this feels like a good, a smart olive branch to extend to their performance. Yeah, absolutely. For a talented performer who is grossly underused in WWE and could be a big player for Impact. Pat and maybe AEW. Have to uh, have to own up to this. For months, I've been calling her Tanielle. Tanielle. I read it once and assumed it was like Danielle with a T. And someone's just. Just yeah. like, very rarely do you hear it spoken out loud. It's written down quite a lot. I just yeah. thought, but no, Tanielle. Yeah. Anyway, Tenille. come back in if you we're done. So you can come back. Arms. We're back. That one's finished. There we go. Uh, right. Vince McMahon. Now, I don't know if you did this news during the week, or if it was me and Nicholas, but Vince McMahon, who's been doing a Vince McMahon, and there was all these stories that Vince McMahon had been on the blower during SmackDown, hadn't been present, we'd done the story being like, oh, he's not going to be at SmackDown, so interesting things might happen. There was a wealth <laughs> of possibility when Vince isn't present, but no, he was present in everybody's ears because he was on the phone rewriting SmackDown for the entire lead up to that show. Apparently didn't like some of the things that were going on, didn't like the scripts, didn't like the matches. Uh, Chad Gable, Shelton Benjamin was supposed to get 12 minutes. Vince went, no, no. Nobody wants to see any wrestling on this yeah, show. Nerds. And he cut that to a lean four. Now, this is, of course, not the first time we've had to report on a story like this. Vince meddles, interferes, changes things right up to uh, the very time of broadcast. This is another confirmed example of him just tearing up otherwise good writing and just vincing all over vincing it. Vincing all over the place. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of, it's a shame in a way because... The... It sucks for the performers more than anything yeah, else. Because if you under the impression that you're going to get 12 minutes, you start building that match, you start working with your opponent, and then you walk up and say, actually, you need you to cut two-thirds of that. Yeah, it's kind of frustrating. It must be really frustrating, particularly for Gable, who's a guy who doesn't really get a whole mm. lot of opportunities. And when they do, they usually revolve around him being short. And it kind of sucks. <laughs> uh, so it's quite ironic there that they've trimmed his match down to a third of what it was going to be. Either way, got it. SmackDown's been all right recently, so, you know. You know both of them have been all right recently. Yeah. There's been a definite upturn in everything, and we'd like to think that's Vince getting distracted, little XFL thing here, worrying about AEW over there, but it's just, he's just still puppeting his little strings all over the place, loves and it. it's just... He loves it, doesn't he? He absolutely loves it. Speaking yeah. of loving it, cheer shots. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah, I love I love concussions. And um, we've got an update here. So if you cast your mind back to AEW Fighter Fest, Cody Rhodes, chair over the head, controversy, controversy, controversy. Should he be doing that? Should he not be doing that? Big no. cut. Things went wrong, supposed to be gimmicked, wasn't gimmicked. Well, we've got a little update on that. Um, 
is from SB Nation's James Dater, a source we haven't used before, hence why I'm reading his goddamn name. Uh, welcome to the family, James, who tells him that sources within AEW have told him that effectively that will be banned going forward. There will be no more unprotected chair shots straight to the goddamn dome. Obviously, it was supposed to be gimmicked that went wrong, but no more. Uh, this shouldn't come as a huge surprise given no. how horrified Tony Khan looked about yes. the whole thing after the show. So. It's, yeah. It was a bit interesting that chair shot. I mean, it, was, it was the only thing they've done which really sort of gave them a bit of a chink in the armor for WWE to have a pop back. Like the way they've run yeah. everything's been pretty much bang on. But of course, Vince did that conference call not long after and said, We're done with that gory crap, which was very obviously a dig at the fact they brought in an unprotected chair shot and the uh, Cody had cut himself up yeah. loads during that match. So, from a PR perspective and a business point of view, even like not even taking into account the safety of the performers. I mean, you said cast your mind back. You can't do that with a bloody concussion, can you, Andy? No. You've literally got to have not taken a chair shot to the head to understand this story. It's That's just... Yeah. It's 2019, isn't it? You shouldn't be taking chair shots to the head anymore. Yeah, I mean, I have never taken a chair shot to the head and I forget everything, so <laughs> there you go. Imagine how much worse it would be in I that know, case. Man, I know, man. Uh, speaking of worse, this could be the worst day of JR's life because AEW have confirmed their announced team going forward for their television broadcast and it's Excalibur. Ooh, it's Big Tony. Ooh. Big Tony Schiavone. And it's Jim Ross. Who, don't get me wrong, I like Jim Ross, but Jim Ross seems to hate commentating for AEW. He seems to hate wrestling, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, every single time I've seen him, it's sort of like, you know, he's got the JR magic, he's bringing you in, he's making you think you're watching the wrestling of youth, which is the only time everybody actually pretends they actually liked it. And now, he watches these matches and he sort of can't believe what he's seeing. It's yeah. all very, wow, this business for him. It's it's interesting because he was very good at double or nothing. Mm. He was like, you know, the Moxley and Omega call at the end was really good stuff. Mm. It was almost back to the JR of old, even though the energy levels obviously aren't quite there. Uh, Fight for the Fallen, however, was... Uh, it, it was, was New Japan, the, Jim Ross. It was one of the biggest downsides to that whole show, yeah. the level of commentary. I don't know whether it's just... Obviously, it's not the wrestling from his day, but the industry's changed so much over the last couple of years. You'd think he just... Get on with it. You're there to you're there to call the action, not undermine what's going yeah. on in front of you. And it's a real shame that, that that happened. Here's hoping that that doesn't happen on TV. But you know, Excalibur, one of the best commentators Ex in the business. Excalibur has been one of the major, probably one of the big boons they've had because a lot of casual wrestling fans will not have been familiar. Yeah. Well, I guess certainly wasn't with his commentary going into AEW, and he's been excellent, really. For he's this he's new tremendous. Audience. He's tremendous. He was tremendous in PWG. Mm. I assume he still does PWG. I haven't watched it this year. Mm. Um, <laughs> but he was excellent there. And other good news recently they brought in uh, Golden Boy who did the commentary on uh, a bit of Fighter Fest because uh, that was a collaboration with mm. a gaming convention. That's good stuff because he was really good as well. Uh, the most positive thing of all of this, no Alex Marvez. <laughs> yeah. anyway. They're assembling their backstage crew quite nicely now because our pal Chris Van mm -hmm. from uh, the YouTube interviews, he's been assigned as a backstage yep. interviewer. He's perfectly good for that. He's Excellent tremendous. Appointment. Yeah. That's actually starting to feel like an actual thing now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, truly good. It's starting to feel like an actual thing. Can't wait for all of them. Me neither. Um, speaking of uh, ends and cast, let's talk about them. <laughs> uh, speaking we'll, of things we can't wait for, uh, and anyway. We'll keep this one relatively brief because we've spoken about the topic mm. to death over the past few days. Obviously, there was a rumor that ends and cast were coming back. They're going to go to NXT. They're going to be big stars. Shot down by Dave almost like 12 hours later. And now we have a quote from Triple H on the situation. He gave an interview with that ever reputable, reliable British source, TalkSport. Uh, he said, but well, this is straight from the horse's mouth, so you know. Yeah, yeah. I immediately told our PR department to shoot down the Enzo and Cash rumors. Absolutely zero interest. Congratulations to Enzo. I'm sure spreading rumors is working well for him, but I want no part of him. Is he trying to say Enzo got that rumor around? I think that might be the case, bro. Wow. Like, <laughs> okay, right, my favorite thing of this story, I should say, was when we did it on the news, it was the fact that uh, Meltzer taking it upon himself during the story to have a pop at his rap career. Like, yeah. I don't really know what he's done. I don't think the rap thing's working out too well for him. Like, what? Like, it was, we, we came around the office. It was one of the most bizarre stories we'd seen, but it was one of those ones that's so bizarre it could have worked. Like, Cass had turned everything around for himself. He looked in incredible shape on the indies. He looked like the kind of person... Not the kind of person, but the kind of state of his career where you could see WWE take an interest yeah. back in him. And yeah. as we all know, the uh, dividing up of that particular tag team was nowhere near as good as when they were a tag no. team. And just, uh, yeah, I can I can thoroughly believe <coughs> that there was some interest and it's now being absolutely buried by WWE. Yeah. Maybe, maybe the conversation just happened. Maybe yeah. somebody had a look at it, but... Yeah, that's not going to happen then. Nope, done. Or, Dead. Else, or else Triple H is a liar. Yeah. And you wouldn't want to be that. But I'll tell you one person who isn't a liar. 
It's best I've got for that one. Yep. AEW have made another awesome backstage appointment, appointment, and this time it's awesome. Kong Brandy Rhodes announced this at Starcast, saying they'd hired her in a backstage capacity as part of the production crew, as well as an in ring talent. Of course, she's in the buy in tonight for the Casino Battle Royale. Now, these keep slipping under the radar a bit, but the amount of backstage appointments AEW are making of wrestlers, people incredibly experienced in the industry, is really good. I think Billy yeah. Gunn was the first one that caught my eye. Mm -hmm. When you look at WWE and the amount of people they're putting in key wrestling positions who are not wrestlers, this is something they're clearly learning from that. Yeah, it's good stuff. Uh, Dean Malenko is another notable mm. one, obviously, earlier this week. Uh, Gold Dust, Dustin Rhodes, was confirmed he's going to be a player coach, just like Awesome Kong. Love it, personally. Uh, these people are very experienced, very, very talented, wealth of knowledge they can pass down to younger wrestlers. I think it's great. She's, of course, hot on the heels mm. of doing her Inside the Ropes tour with Kenny, formerly oh. of this parish. Apparently, it was very, very good, very insightful. So we look forward to hearing more about that as and when it happens. But that's it, Andy. We're that's done. That's it. We can go home now. Yeah. Let's, let's finish. Oh, we've got no, no we're here till. Yeah, we're here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so about that. Yeah. Anyway, let us know what you made of all of these new stories in the comments below. Of course, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. As we say, we are live streaming out the hoop. Tonight we'll be live with NXT <laughs> UK, laugh, maybe Royal Quest, and All Out later on this evening. Please do join us for those if you are watching them. And if not, well, we'll see you around. It's your life, I suppose. We're going to get you on Twitter, Andy. You can get me on Twitter at Andy H. Marty. The H stands for this guy. It's Honeycomb. Honeycomb. Nah, see, I thought you could have gone with horse. Sin yeah. Anyway, should have gone for horse. Uh, of course, you get me at Adam Cleary. The entire What Culture Wrestling family is available at What Culture WWE. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. This has been the news. And this has been Honeycomb. And that's been Honeycomb. Hey. Good evening. Sin Cara, innit? Yeah. Bye.